my name is Abhishek and welcome back to MBBS Treasure channel. In this video, we are going to describe the pathology of SOC. Not that SOC which you are thinking about, but it's a different kind of SOC that acts on our body according to the changing environment. Yes, the, in this SOC, our body tends to lose all of its vital function suddenly. It means acutely there will be stoppage of all vital function of our body due to which it is known as an extreme condition. So in this video, we are going to describe the SOC as an extremal condition. So first of all, we should know what is a SOC. We should define what is a SOC. And then after we will go to the pathogenic classification of SOC. What do you mean by SOC? It's a critical condition or extreme condition in which our body will face the problem like it will result from the action of pathogenic factors and that pathogenic factor will act upon our body leading to or uh, enhancing the extreme force on the body and finally that will cause the impaired hemodynamics and critical decrease of capillary circulation. In this impaired hemodynamics, it means there will be disturbance in cardiovascular system. Our heart will not function as it was functioning before. There will be decreasing in cardiac output of the uh, um, cardiac output of heart, and plus there will be critical decrease of capillary circulation. So, in this thing, if this thing will occur it will lead to tissue perfusion. There will be decreasing in tissue perfusion. So ulti ultimately, this shock is nothing but decreasing in tissue perfusion. Okay. What happens when this tissue perfusion will decrease? If the tissue is not getting enough amount of blood, it means that it will be leading to hypoxia. The tissue is not getting enough amount of blood because the heart is not pumping that much amount of blood to each organ. So the tissue will, there will be tissue hypoxia. Less amount of oxygen uh, will be supplied to the tissue that will be causing hypoxia. And if hypoxia will be there, what will happen? There will be appearance of anaerobic metabolism. The cell will try to survive through this anaerobic metabolism. But this anaerobic metabolism will lead to formation of lactic acid in the, in the cell. And that lactic acid creates a medium in which it will lead to vasoconstriction of the capillaries and there will be decreasing or critical decrease, sudden critical decrease of the capillary circulation plus it will create a medium inside the cell in which there will be release of intracellular lysozymes. Okay, if the intracellular lysozymes will be released inside the cell, what will happen? it will obviously cause the intracellular damage, the cell will be damaged and hopefully the tissue will get damaged. So, in conclusion, it's said there will be progressive disruption of all life supporting system of the organism. If all life supporting system of the organisms will get affected or will be disrupted, then how the human will survive? That is the reason why the SOC is known as an extreme condition or a critical condition in which the body tends to lose all kinds of its vital function. Okay. So this is the total definition through which we can say that yes, the SOC is an extreme condition or uh, we should need to be prepared for that extreme condition. Next comes the pathogenic classification how the classification has made. According to the pathology, this classification is made 
according to the mechanisms let's see first is comes first here comes is the hypovolemic sir what do you mean by hypovolemic hypovolemic means there will be decreasing in hypovolemic means there will be decreasing in volume if the loss of volume of more than 20% of body fluid takes place more than 20% of body fluid will be lost then what will happen enough amount of or uh, the required amount of blood that needs to be circulated in our body will not reach to the heart and if it will not be reached obviously the cardiac output or uh, the cardiac output will decrease if the cardiac output will decrease the um, required amount uh, of blood to the organs will not be reached and in henceforth there will be decreasing in the body fluid or decreasing in the function of the tissue that will that will be lead, leading to shock so this is the reason why it is known as hypovolemic shock what are the examples the examples are like hemorrhagic and anhydrotic shock hemorrhagic means when there will be bloodless or blood hemorrhage and anhydrotic means it's a situation uh, it's a situation in which the body is suffering from vomiting excessive vomiting uh, losing electrolytes through diarrhea okay so there will be extra amount of loss in uh, fluid from the body so this is a condition is known as hypovolemic shock and this hypovolemic shock is characterized by this factor if the body fluid is lost more than 20% you should remember this fact next comes the cardiogenic shock obviously according to the mechanism of this shock the shock is primarily dependent upon the cardiovascular system it means the heart so here comes according to the word cardio means heart the heart will generating the shock how the heart will generate the shock if the heart is not properly functioning obviously yes if there will be acute fall in the pumping ability of the heart if the heart is not able to pump enough amount of blood throughout the our body then this problem will arise so it is said disturbance in pumping of heart next comes is the vascular form of shock here say it's impaired hemodynamics and critical decrease in capillary circulation obviously capillary circulation includes the vessels and if there will be any damage in the uh, vessels or vascular forms then we will it will also leads to shock vascular form it means there will be disturbance in some vascular component uh, or inside the vessels like in case of anaphylactic anaphylactic is nothing but nothing but the first it's nothing but this anaphylactic reaction is a fast hypersensitive reaction in which there will be a uh, releasing of certain kind of biochemicals inside the vessels and that will lead to vasodilation and that vasodilation will lead to certain changes surrounding the cells oh sorry certain changes in the cells surrounding the vessels in which those biochemicals will be released okay next comes the painful or traumatic shock this painful or traumatic shock occurs at the site of injury if there will be any kind of mechanical accident or mechanical trauma or any kind of accident that will be leading uh, to the shock and if it will damage the central regulation of blood circulation if any way the blood circulation is hampered then that will be called as traumatic shock this traumatic shock is the most important shock we are going to describe in this video because it is the mostly asked questions of our teachers okay and this traumatic shock is mostly seen in trauma and burning trauma it means any kind of accidents or mechanical trauma so this is all about the shock definition and this is the pathogenic classification of shock so till now we have discussed the definition of shock 
and now we are going to discuss the pathological mechanism of shock how this shock appears and what are the conclusions of the shock okay so uh, in my previous uh, slide i have said about four classification of shock and first one is the hypovolemic shock second is the cardiogenic shock and third is the vascular form of shock and fourth is the traumatic or the painful kind of shock in all total shock means there will be suddenly decreasing in the blood pressure or there will be appearance of a condition hypotension and this occur in an acute manner so all in a sudden if there will be any kind of trauma or accident acting upon the body it will lead to decreasing in the body fluid so here comes the first shock the mechanism of first shock is the hypovolemic shock as the decrease as there will be decreasing in the body fluid obviously it will be called as hypovolemia condition hypovolemia condition what will happen then then what will happen there will be decreasing in the venous return and now the required amount of blood that should be present inside the vein and that should travel to the heart will not be there because the the uh, blood is lost through the trauma or any kind of accident and what will happen if there will be decreasing in the venous return there will be appearance of a condition known as preload there will be decreasing in the preload this is the important questions where you should remember that in shock which factor is the leading mechanism of disturbance in the heart obviously the leading mechanism is decreasing in the preload what do, what do you mean by preload preload means this is superior vena cava and this is inferior vena cava and they put their blood in right atrium so to conduct okay so to conduct a proper uh, heart contraction the superior vena cava and inferior vena cava contribute their venous blood to the right atrium and if the there will be decreasing in the venous return obviously the superior vena cava will not get the amount and inferior inferior vena cava will not get that much amount of blood that is required to fill the right atrium this is the condition which is known as decreasing in the preload okay so this condition will appear and then what will happen there will be decreasing in the cardiac output obviously if the required amount of blood is not reaching to the right atrium then the left ventricle will not give or will not pump that much amount of or the required amount of blood throughout the body so the left ventricle decreases the cardiac output because the stroke volume and heart rate the stroke volume decreases and heart rate will decrease this is the reason why the the there will be decreasing in the cardiac output and further it will lead to the hypotension condition hypotension condition means decreasing in the blood pressure the pressure will not be exerted on the blood vessels by the blood or a fluid this is the reason why the tissue will not get Uh, the required amount of blood to uh, function its uh, proper metabolic activities so there will be appearance of this condition tissue perfusion and finally there will be destruction of cell as this destruction of cell takes place so there will be multi organ damage as there will be multiple organ damage obviously the vital functions of the body is lost and in this acute condition the body will not survive or have lost the 
uh, ability to survive. So this is the total mechanism through which shock occurs and we should remember here that what is the uh, causing factor for decreasing of the cardiac output? Yes, it is the decreasing in the preload condition. And what, how the tissue perfusion and destruction of the cell occurs, I have already explained in my previous slide. Okay, so this is all about my video and uh, this is all about today's uh, video like SOC. In my next video, I will be explaining about the traumatic shock and it has two phases like erectile and torpid phase. I will be explaining in uh, my next video briefly. So I hope you like my videos and if you uh, think it's really helpful, please uh, like, share and subscribe. Uh, and uh, if you have any kind of doubt, please write me in the comment section below. Thank you so much.